group. We normally have been doing this in our breakout sessions. Why don't we just kick off with sharing who you are, your favorite thing to do at the library and why you're here. And I'll start, I'm Katie Messerly. I'm the library's communication specialist. And um, I love the quiet space. Uh, I love going to back, the, back there to work and um, just kind of relax. Either that or the fireplace is my top favorite thing to do. And I'm here tonight because I am your facilitator and I have been the facilitator um, for the facilities plan process these uh, last six months. And I'm gonna tag, it looks like Janet. Why don't you go next and just take the next person, the next name you see. Um, my name is Janet Meisel Burns and I've lived in Windsor about 18 years and seen our town grow. And um, I think for me, the best thing would be to see what's going to happen with the library in terms of changes. Um, I'm a regular uh, person who reads books as does my husband and uh, we visit weekly, so we just want to know what's going on. Wonderful. So I'll take Bud, I guess. Oh, hello. I'm Bud Hunt. I'm the IT and Technical Services Manager for the Clearview Library District. My favorite thing to do at the library is to walk around when it's calm and realize that everything is working and up. Uh, I like that very, very much. Uh, and with that, I will pass it to Cindy and Lee, two of my favorite class attendees. That's so sweet. Um, we're Cindy. Don't tell the others. Oh, no. <laughs> it's our secret. Um, we're Cindy and Lee Schiller, and we enjoy not only reading, but we enjoy the adult programs that we have been able to have at the library, and, and we've learned so many things, and we want those to continue. So I'm really, really interested to see what kind of things that the board and the Friends and Foundation have figured out uh, to go along with the strategic plan to sort of increase the space where there is no space. And I guess I'll take it over to Barry Wilson. Hello, I'm Barry Wilson. I've been in Windsor for over 20 years now and I'm uh, on the town board. I'm, uh, I guess I'm starting up my fourth year of my first term. And so I, I've just always been a friend of the library. I have three kids in college now. I have twins that are freshmen. And, um, you know, when they were younger, we used the library a lot. Uh, when they got older, they had Kindles and we did the uh, mobile downloads of stuff like that. And, and um, you know, so uh, I'm interested to see it. I think our community has grown so much. I see it firsthand. We all see it firsthand, but looking at the numbers and stuff, and I think the library has done great with the space that it has, but I'm interested to see what we can do with the future, because I think if we don't do something, it's going to be a big challenge. Yeah. The growth has not slowed. If anything, it has accelerated even during COVID. Oh, for sure. We are going to tag Barry. We'll have to see who didn't go yet. How about David? Uh, sure, I'll hop in. Um, so I'm I'm one of the people who are, I guess, helping Windsor grow. I've only lived in Windsor for uh, a little over a year and maybe four months. So um, just very curious to see, uh, you know, what's slated, uh, you know, upcoming. We've already, you know, uh, I live uh, right next to park one of the parks where the uh, bookmobile comes by. I think it's an awesome program, uh, and so. I, Find myself stopping in quite frequently to the library so yeah just um very excited very curious to see what's going on uh, just yeah not sure i have much else <laughs> all right take the next person uh let's go with kendra well welcome david from an oldie here um i raised my family in windsor um i let my child who was in um elementary middle school actually drive across Eastman to get to the library and it's probably one of the few people that has ever been grounded from the library because she wasn't doing anything but going to the library so um, we love all things library um, we uh, my favorite is the fireplace because you give me a fireplace and I'm a happy girl um, I also love um, seeing the bookmobile it did my heart so much um, cheer during the 
last year to see it with the fire trucks and the police and everyone and being just a part of the community. And I think that's what's so important about our library is that it is such an amazing part of our community. And I am on the board of trustees and I am serving as president this year. And I'm going to throw it to my dear friend, Denise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm Denise Staley. Um, we live outside of the city boundaries in Weld County, but um, my kids go to, we're in the Windsor Severance Library District and uh, our Clearview, and uh, my kids go to Windsor Charter. Um, we heavily, heavily use the library. We do everything from the Rubik's Cubes to the um, books on um, overdrive and hoopla and we just we, we're just constantly at the library so um, I'm just interested to see um, uh, what everyone's thinking and what's going on because um, uh, I we just see how crazy Windsor is growing right now so we're um, we just know there's a need for more services and resources for people so and uh, yeah and Kendra invited me because she helped us buy our house so <laughs> Um, I don't know who hasn't gone yet. Why don't we go with Lance? There you go. You hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Hello. My name is Lance Nichols. Uh, I live north of Severance, Colorado. Uh, I grew up in eastern Colorado, um, and I married a girl from up here, and we farm just north of Severance a couple miles. Um, I am actually the new liaison to the uh, uh, Weld RE4 School District. Um, I took over um, position for Brad, and uh, I'll be serving as your liaison uh, for the library uh, as far as the board is concerned. Um, I enjoy libraries just for the quiet and, the, and, the, and I can get a lot of thinking done if I need some place to go where I can uh, um, do my best thinking and get a lot accomplished. I've always always had a joy for the library. Uh, growing up in Eastern Colorado, we of course had a library there at the school, but the bookmobile was a huge asset for us. And it would come to the school <clears throat> once, I think twice a, a, a month and I always look forward to it. So um, I, I, th I think that's something that we need to continue up in this area. And the growth up here is just mind blowing. So um, having a resource such as a library, that uh, uh, people can use uh, the community as, as well as the students of RE4 is uh, um, something that uh, I look forward to being a part of. That's it. Well, I'm gonna tag in Frank next. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you for that, yes. <laughs> Apologize, I was muted. I'm Frank Baszler. I am a uh, alt uh, trustee to the library board. Um, I'm also a trustee for the town of Severance. Um, obviously libraries are very important. Um, I think everyone said everything that needs to be said. I do like the fireplace by the library though. I like reading there. So it's a great place to be for reading. Uh, I'll tag Ron Dunworth. Who? <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> My name is Ron Dunworth, and uh, I love the library. I love libraries. I love the concept. I like to read. I love to read, so go figure. Uh, I am also on the Board of Trustees for the Library District, and I am also the treasurer, so uh, I get to do what I like best, uh, count money, keep track of money, and read. That's kind of a nice way to go through, through life. So... Um, my turn to pick, huh? Mm -hmm. Mayor Runemeyer, whose picture's not up. There he is. Came back in. I switched from my cell phone. Hi, everybody. Hi, Paul. Uh, glad to be with you this evening. So many great faces with this group here, by the way. Um, anyhow, the thing I love about the library is is uh, I I have to be on. I have to be a hundred percent transparent. When I was growing up, I dreaded the library because it meant I had to read. And I had to read. I mean, I'm just being honest. I, I did. And now I have about three to 400 pages a week I have to read for the town. So I got even uh, later in life. But uh, um, 
glad to be with you all this evening. I kind of just want to be the fly on the wall to uh, hear what's going on with the library and their vision for the future and everything. It has nothing to do with our library. I saw Ann's laughing. I, I'm telling you, I just had to be honest that I have my library card. My kids love the bookmobile. Um, I don't know what else I can say, but uh, I've lived in town for over 14 years now. I have a 14 year old, a 13 year old and a 10 year old and uh, they all love to read uh, quite a bit. So uh, they uh, must've gotten that from their mom. So with that, I will tag, I, now this is getting difficult here. Who have I not heard from? I see uh, Kimberly. Hey everyone, my name is Kimberly and um, I am the, I'm a parent uh, as well as the director for um, a youth organization that has partnered with the library for a couple of years now and some programming. And so from a personal um, family kind of perspective, my kids really transitioned well um, and we go to Windsor Library as often as possible, even though we don't live in Windsor um, because it's they you guys have the grab and go kits um like they checked out a grow a gopro that they could play around with because i was too cheap to buy them one because i knew they would break it um so like the electronics kits and those kinds of hands-on pieces my kids are both really big readers but they're the kids that like to own the books so if we if we check something out at the library then i ended up buying it anyway because they wanted to read it so many times the kids are really, really powerful. Um, both my kids, as well as myself, we have um, the Hoopla apps and all of the downloadables have been really, really valuable, especially during COVID. And we've done a lot of the teen programming with the take, the take kits where we drop by the library during COVID. We can pick up a kit and go home and do the programming online. Um, as a community member and a community leader, the value of the library with the teens that we serve, um, not only does it mirror a lot of the stuff that I just said about my own kids, but um, it mirrors the, the place where they can be, they can exist as themselves and their authentic selves. And knowing that our library really genuinely cares for all people has been a real priority for Clearview. And it, I, that's why I'm here tonight is to just make sure that like, we can stay on those tracks of positive progressions with individuals and recognizing everybody that, that uses and values the library. So I grew up in Windsor. I'm probably a lifer in NOCO. So uh, I'm here to stay. Thanks a lot. I will pass it off to Ann. Hi everybody, I'm Ann Kling. I'm the director at the library. And my favorite thing about the library is going to work every day and seeing what exciting things the staff are providing for the public, both collections and programs. We have an amazing staff. And I will tag Michelle Duda. Michelle, are you there? I think we're having some audio issues. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Now we can. Thanks for tagging me in, Ann. Um, I'm Michelle Duda. I am doing some multitasking here, so bear with me. Um, oh, I think we lost your connection. Michelle is on the Board of Trustees for the Town of Severance. And so if she comes back, we'll flip back to her. But in the interest of time, I'm gonna tag in the 970 number. And um, I will, I'm not, I don't know how to swipe because I'm on my mobile. So if somebody else could tag in the next person, that would be very helpful. No problem. How about the 970 number? The person calling in, I think this is Carolyn. hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. My name is Carolyn, and I'm a retired academic library administrator. I came to Windsor a little less than two years ago, and um, I just very recently joined the foundation board, and so I'm basically here uh, to listen and to learn more about 
the library and the plans for the future. You're welcome. And since you can't see anybody, I'll tag in Joanne Perko. Thank you. You're muted, Joanne. Got it. Can you hear me? Now we can. Okay. Um, I, I figured out that the question was, what do you love about, about the library? Um, I have found that the one thing that I value the most about the Clearview Library District is that no matter who you are, if you walk through the door, you are treated with respect and the dignity you deserve and the playing field is level no matter who you are, you are equal um, in their eyes and they will help you with whatever you need. And I think that is amazing. And um, another thing I like about um, our library is that how long it's going on so that I can come to something like this and see a former student, Kim, and the husband of a former student, Lance, <laughs> and feel like um, it's home, you know, and the library feels like home and, and that's, that's a good thing. That's it. All right, take you in, Jeremy. We're getting on the last few <clears throat> folks. All right, uh, yeah, my name is Jeremy Balderrama. Um, I've been a resident here in Windsor for a little over eight years now. And uh, my favorite things, I have two things about the library. One is I, uh, I like playing, uh, I like, being able to check out the video games um and i've uh saved so much money um checking out the games before i realize i don't have time to play them and make that 60 dollars mistake over and over again so uh, i appreciate that and then the second thing is i love bringing my two daughters to the library um and just seeing all the things they discover and things we come home with and uh they're just so anxious to, to learn new things and uh explore and, and be able to have the opportunity just to be able to have all those different types of books and everything that they can check out and yeah, I'm just anxious to see uh, what's ahead for the library. Um, and uh, again, seeing all the growth and uh, appreciate to see uh, how we can come up with some creative ideas to, to help accommodate our, our needs. And I believe last but not least, Casey, has everyone else gone? Bud. Bud went Maybe. earlier. Are you Bud fine? went, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just Casey, um, woohoo, the birthday I'm girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yesterday. Uh, I am Casey Lansinger Pierce. I am the public services manager at Clearview Library District. Um, so that is a schmancy way of saying that I oversee the teams that coordinate all of our programming and our mobile services. So that includes the bookmobile that several of you mentioned, and it's really heartwarming to hear what a value the bookmobile uh, is in, in your lives and your neighborhoods. Um, oh gosh, I this is like a dream career come true. So I have a lot of favorite things about the library, but I would say one of my favorites is um, popping in to our programs and just watching the programmers create magic and wonder for our community, whether it's a lively story time or a after school program. We offer something for all ages and um, always new things and always exciting things. So that rises to the top for me. All right, well, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, tonight, we will be gathering a shared knowledge base of the library's facilities plan. And then we look to get your thoughts on the draft recommendations for the library's future facilities. So just a quick agenda, I'll be zooming through the kind of context of how, where we've been and, and what we've done. Uh, then we'll have a brief Q and A. We'll break out into some small groups. It looks like tonight, if we stick to this number, we'll be at 10 group or two groups, sorry. And then we'll come back together as a large group to report out and then wrap up. Any questions before we dig in? All right, just a few housekeeping items. Um, this We will look for this to be a community conversation. So feel free at any point to unmute and ask a question. But since we are all in different spaces, just ask that you stay muted until you do have a contribution to the conversation. So that way background noise doesn't distract anyone else in the room. Well, as we've all kind of touched on just in the introductions, growth, it's a huge challenge as well as a blessing for us. Since we opened the Windsor Severance Library on Third Street in 1997, we've grown 172%. So we've grown from just under 10,000 residents 
in our service area, which we share the same district boundaries as the Weldari 4 School District, to just under 27,000. Now that is um, 2019 numbers. So uh, just based on the growth that the town of Windsor and the town of Severance have experienced, um, we expect that to be actually much larger. And that growth is going to continue. You know, we worked with the Metropolitan Planning Organization to project out um, uh, some population forecasts through 2045. And Northern Colorado is one of the top growing areas in the state. And you can see that the areas in this kind of heat map representation, the areas in lime green and yellow are those that are the fastest growing. And those just happen to be in our district. If you zoom in to just our district boundaries, you can see that we're going to see some significant growth in the Severance area as well as the West Greeley portions of our district. And ultimately by 2045, the North Front Range Metropolitan Organization believes that we will exceed 200,000 residents. So we'll go from approximately 27,000 today to in 25 years, potentially 200,000 residents. So not only have we experienced significant growth, but there's more to come. Now back in 2014, um, the state of Colorado did an analysis of library facilities and they looked at the square footage per capita. And at today's population or the 2019 service legal service area count of approximately 27,000, um, we fall in to between the 25th and 50th percentile in our population category. And previously our board has made it a goal to be in the 75th or 95th percentiles. In order to achieve that goal, we would need to increase our square footage from our current square footage of 17,000 square feet. So that's the square footage of our single location, the Windsor Severance Library on, on 3rd Street um, to 27,000. If we wanted to be in the 95th percentile, we would need to uh, be at 42,000 square feet. Um, and that's just, that's just to meet today's needs. So, um, Essentially, we're already behind in per capita, uh, square footage per capita for our current population, let alone setting ourselves up for the growth that is to come. Now, many of you participated in our strategic plan process or feedback survey in 2019. What we heard from that survey um, what was, uh, and with, when posed the question, what one thing would you change or improve? The number one thing was space. Now space meant a lot of different things to folks. It could just be, you know, we want more space in general, or we want, you know, this specific location to be expanded, or we want a branch here. Additionally, the next two areas would be a desire for more physical materials and a desire for more programming. Obviously, if we need more materials and more programs, uh, and we have a space issue currently, we need more space to meet those needs. So in looking at that feedback, 845 of the comments of the 3,500 3, comments total um, dealt with space. And so those uh, items that were tagged as space themed, that ranged from more space to identifying a specific location for potential space, um, commenting on different locations, children's uh, space or a desire for increased children's area space, and noise issues. So it was all across the board on what people were providing feedback on this topic. When people identified a specific location, uh, uh, it, there was no clear consensus. It ranged from, you know, 36% of folks said, you know, we want one larger single building and that was essentially on the ballot measure a few years ago to build a branch to don't change or stop. And then we like your current location. We'd like for you to expand it. So armed with that knowledge, um, the, oops, I'm missing a slide. Well, armed with that knowledge, <laughs> our advisory group um, established a, a, a call to action um, 
that identified space as a key priority, one of our focus areas in the strategic plan. Now, uh, with that, we identified seven needs or challenges that we're currently experiencing and or received feedback on. And our board took the time to prioritize these needs and challenges. And they're as follows. Um, folks felt like we needed a more defined and expanded children's area. Um, as mentioned in the, the top three feedback themes, more space for programming and materials, adequate space for staff to work, uh, more collaboration spaces, expanded quiet spaces, and increased storage opportunities. Now, when we dig into what that means in terms of a defined and expanded children's area, um, in order to meet the demand of our voracious little readers, uh, we have put up as many shelves and book bins and, and uh, rotators as possible, and it has made the space quite crowded. You can also see that we're limited right now on our seating. Um, and so moms are basically pulling up any opportunity that they can. And man, doesn't that look uncomfortable sitting in a little one's chair? <laughs> uh, so our browsability uh, is limited. Our ability to hold children's programming is limited. Ability to have family-friendly family friendly, um, reading areas or opportunities to engage is limited. Um, we're just, we need more space. Now, 13% of all of the space comments uh, focused on, on a particular noise issue. And that we believe is for a variety of reasons. One, our library is an open, um, open concept. So our children's area um, uh, leads into the rest of the library. So particularly after story times and after school uh, in a normal time, um, we experience uh, quite a bit of noise which would be great if we had a large quiet space, but unfortunately our quiet space it shares a home with our nonfiction collection. So in our quiet space, we have tried to in incorporate as much seating or workstations as possible um, in this dedicated quiet area, but we are limited to only eight workstations or seats in this area for people to read or work, um, which we believe that there is a demand for more based on feedback. In addition, um, we only have one large conference room and two small conference rooms. So we are limited on spaces that folks can come and gather and interact. So oftentimes our book clubs, our tutoring sessions, even our staff are gathering at tables on the floor and that also contributes to noise. When we looked at um, how our, those conference rooms, our two small conference rooms and our large conference rooms are being utilized, the majority of the time, 75% of the time they're being used for library events. Additionally, 18% uh, of the time they're being booked for staff purposes um, because we don't have a dedicated staff conference room or meeting space that's shared with patrons. So only 6% of the time were our rooms booked in 2019 um, for patron purposes. We believe that that's an unacceptable amount and we need additional spaces in order to make our rooms more available for um, patrons to hold book clubs, HOA meetings, Bible studies, et cetera. Well, our, our community is definitely crying for more programming spaces. Um, like I mentioned, we only have um, two uh, small conference rooms and one large conference room. Given the size of our average programs, um, we, we primarily utilize the large conference room. And so this uh, uh, really hinders our ability to program simultaneously. Um, and uh, it is quite the battle royale when it comes to scheduling for our programmers on who gets what space and when. And as you can see, we have a significant number of attendees um, at each of our programs each year, and uh, the demand continues to increase. We tried to uh, utilize as much space as possible outside of the four walls of the library in order to meet that demand. 
um, in normal times. Uh, we're in Weld RE4 schools, nearly every school building. Um, we hold regular programming in the Windsor and Severance parks. Stay tuned, the weather's getting warmer. We're gonna start outdoor in-person programming, yay. Uh, under normal times, we hold a weekly story time at Severance Town Hall, and uh, we hold a variety of programs, particularly adult and family-centered programs at the Pooter Learning Center and local businesses. Uh, unfortunately, we are not alone in the growth capacity issue, and so all of these organizations are experiencing similar things as we are, and so we believe that we have utilized um, other organizations to the max capacity as they are willing and able. This has resulted in uh, waitlisting our programs. We've had to cap registrations. And so in 2019, that resulted in 224 people being waitlisted. That uh, number nearly doubled from 2018 at 100 people waitlisted. And that's just the people that when you come to our website page, there's a, a big program or a big button on the program page that says join the waitlist. So how often do people come see that join the waitlist bus, but, but know that it's full and just don't even bother. These are the people that bother to click and complete the registration. So we suspect that the, the demand is actually much higher than um, what our waitlist programs indicate. And regularly our reading bug programs and any of our uh, adult or teen programs that offer kits are waitlisted almost instantaneously. Now, um, we've had the question, well, why don't you offer more sections? We would love to. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lack of space to not only hold additional sections of a program, but also space to be able to prepare uh, the program materials. And then we need staff in order to run those programs and you'll see in just a moment that we are out of space to house additional staff members. In looking at more space for materials, one of the first questions that we get is, um, why do we even need space for books? Are you crazy? And oftentimes we go, well, nobody reads anymore. Well, that's just not true in our community. Uh, in looking at the data from the Pew Research Center, the typical American adult reads four books per year. Our patrons read double that. Now, the next response we usually get is, well, why would anyone need a physical book? It's just eBooks all the way, online, online, online. Well, we have experienced exponential growth in our eBook circulation, uh, checkouts and renewals, um, but unfortunately, it just doesn't even come close to uh, the physical circulation. So this is just our circulation in 2019 for adult books. So any physical printed item um, that, uh, that came in at 77,824 in comparison to eBooks at 26,679. Now, there is some thought to, well, have you increased your shelf capacity as much as possible? The answer is yes, but when we do that, it has some adverse effects. So you'll see with our DVD collection, we've had just a huge demand for DVD collection over the last few years. And so we have, as a result, increased the number of DVDs and Blu-rays that we offer. And on what we have seen is that the collection uh, when it grows, but that space doesn't grow at the same rate, our circulation either levels off or it begins to stagnate and decline. And in two years, we added 44 shelves and we've crammed in as many DVDs as possible. And to do that, you'll notice that we switched from basically front facing things to vertically facing things to fit as much as possible. And we believe that 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 shift and basically cramming as much stuff in a single space as possible has resulted in that decrease in circulation numbers. Because we saw that in our print collection as well. We have a, a demand for, for print material, particularly with our adult collection, but without the space to grow, our circulation has stagnated. And so you'll see we've, we've had to try and do the same thing with our print materials. And so vertically facing or orienting on the shelf as much as possible versus front facing. Now, when you look at this picture, what stands out to you? What grabs your attention most? 
I know at least for me, it's the books that are front facing. I, my eye is drawn immediately to them. I disregard everything that's vertically facing. And that's not, that's not a new kind of marketing technique, so to speak. Um, if you walk into any bookstore, Barnes and Noble, the majority of the books are front facing because that's how the serendipity occurs. People like to explore, they like to browse. That browsability factor is extremely important when it comes to libraries and um, the checkout and renewal numbers. Speaking of our, our collection, um, there is a process called weeding or deaccessioning our materials, so which is a healthy thing. And basically, if something hasn't circulated or been checked out or renewed um, in, in typical libraries um, in three to five years, it's removed from circulation. And that usually equates to about 5% of a collection each year. Because of our space constraints, we're having to deaccession items in one to three years, which results in about 10% of our collection uh, being removed each year in order to accommodate new material that people are requesting. Now, when we do that, when we're having to deaccession materials at a higher rate, we're really losing a depth of collection. We're losing the classics and we're uh, losing that serendipity factor that occurs when, you know, oh, I, I heard about this book, uh, you know, from a friend, do you have it? And, you know, unfortunately we might not if, it, if it's something that isn't very popular at the moment. If you've been to the library in the last few years, you'll have seen our beautiful Connex storage trailer. This was intended to be a temporary measure um, and we're coming up on year three of our rental agreement and we'll have to renew uh, pretty soon our uh, uh, temporary permit with the town. Um, we had to add in this Connex storage unit um, to be able to house um, non-circulating materials. So things like um, uh, programming supplies, office supplies, things like that, that are in particular not used very often because um, we are plumb out of space inside. You can see our staff members are utilizing their basically cubicle workspaces for storage. And yet we still need an additional Connex trailer, um, which is utilized um, to be able to house uh, uh, the supplies that we need. Not only that, but we need adequate staff workspace, uh, especially COVID has made us aware that we have tried to maximize every square inch available to library staff. And, um, and, and we have met that maximum capacity. I, I can speak to my own self. I'm a new hire in June and there is not a desk space for me. And so I work remotely. Um, out of my home because there is no home for me at the library at this moment in time. So what in addition, we are missing dedicated staff meeting spaces. So we have to share that conference room space with our patrons. Um, our managers and supervisors do not have dedicated offices. So they have to schedule sensitive conversations around our programming schedules and things like that. And uh, then as mentioned previously, we need space for storage, for processing materials, for program preparation. And if any of you would like to see this firsthand, we would be happy to give you a behind the scenes tour at the library. <laughs> Just let us know. When we asked staff in a survey in October, 2020, what do you need to do your job or to do it better? The top three themes were, I need more workspace, I need a more desk space. I need a work area to be able to, you know, gather the supplies needed for the programs to construct what I need to construct to work on that computer. Um, I then the next one was we need more storage space, and then I want to hold more programs, but we don't have the space in order to be able to handle that increased capacity. Now. All of these challenges are not new because growth is not new to our district. We look to solve uh, uh, these challenges uh, in previous years with one large facility off of the corner of Main Street and Chimney Park Drive. Um, it was brought before voters in both 2017 and 2018. And um, unfortunately, it did not pass either time. Um, what we heard from our uh, 
community members was that uh, the, the cost and the taxes uh, were a big factor, that there was a perception of a lack of need as well as concerns about that particular location. Armed with that knowledge, um, our advisory group in the 2020 strategic plan um, provided some in-depth information about goals for space. And I can, I'll let you read this. Um, but what this resulted in were six exploration items was what we pulled from that focus area of space, that language pre pre presented by our advisory group. And that was to basically, uh, as, as Kendra has liked to say, kick every tire, uh, turn over every stone. We're going back to the drawing board and looking at what all the different solutions um, could be. Um, have things changed since last time we looked at them? Basically revisiting the list. And that was everything from, you know, what the feasibility is with our existing building, within our existing footprint, as well as outward and upward expansion, um, building new space, either one large facility or branch uh, branches across the district. Uh, what is available on the market in terms of properties to rent, lease, or buy? And uh, are there opportunities to partner with other organizations on shared spaces, since so many of the governmental agencies are experiencing similar growth uh, capacity issues? Uh, could we look at offsite staffing partnerships in order to make more room to solve some of our staffing needs? And then are there developers out there that would want to partner on a particular solution? So with that in mind, our board of trustees decided to pursue a short and long-term facilities plan. So not only do we need to address these challenges that we're facing in the immediate future, but also um, we need to start preparing now um, and setting this up for success if we are indeed going to hit that 200,000 resident population number. Um, and this is a direct result of the strategic plan and our community feedback. So we kicked things off in September and each month uh, we kind of worked our way through a particular focus area of those exploration options. Um, we're currently in March and uh, the board has been presented with a draft plan with recommendations from the long range planning committee. And uh, now we are looking to our community members to come back and say, you know, okay, we heard you. This is what we've gathered and what we think is feasible and meets our, our needs. Um, is this the right path? Is this what our community wants? That's very important to us moving forward. So our committee did a ton of work, our long range planning committee, which Kendra and Ron were both part of that committee. Um, they worked with experts to develop financial and growth projections. Um, we analyzed the district's use and performance data, both in terms of our own um, historical data, as well as comparisons to libraries across the state. Um, we crafted a vision for the district and set course on um, a service model vision. Uh, we identified and prioritized the needs of the community and the district. Um, out of those six space exploration areas that were identified in the strategic plan, there were 11 concrete proposals that we vetted out the feasibility. And then the committee established short-term and long-term action items that we'll share right now. But I'll take just a hot second to see if anyone has any questions since um, I've, I've sped through to give us as much time as possible in our groups. And I think you're muted. Jeremy put a question in the chat. Oh, sorry, I did not see that. Let me... I can I can just ask it if it's faster. Um, but I was, you know, I'm curious because I know that that this has been a, a years, you know, years long process and, and multiple years and working through all this. And I was curious with COVID, um, how is that how will COVID change the way that the library space is used? And, and basically, I'm just wondering if there's programs or offerings that you're finding that you're probably not going to be able to bring back within the next two, three years. That's a great question. 
um, and one that we're still working through. Um, we believe that we will begin based on all the data that we're seeing, we'll begin in-person programming, um, at least through the summer, likely outdoors, but hopefully if things continue on the positive trajectory that they are, that we'll start um, programming in person in the fall. And so we have already uh, received feedback from our community that they're hungry for in-person programming. And so we don't anticipate um, that changing, but that is something that we are monitoring. And uh, it was in when speaking with the experts that we've consulted with throughout this process to gather data, it has been a consideration um, in talking with each one of them. For example, the feasibility study um, that we did with ratio on um, the current library building on what we could do to maximize the space within our existing footprint. Um, you know, it was during the time of COVID and it was a, a factor. Um, I think Bud said it best earlier today in another session, um, essentially uh, in speaking with uh, architectural and design experts, um, uh, on different projects, um, they're, the design of buildings is changing slightly, but they're still building the buildings, if that makes sense. It's, it's not changing the overall picture. Um, it might change how the, the space is ultimately designed. But yeah, I guess, I mean, you see, done? sorry to interrupt, but you see like, I mean, you see those pictures with the staff basically on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Is is that probably not gonna be an occurrence going forward or? Uh, not with these recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nice I mean to, be, to be quite frank, Ann, Casey, and I are taking turns figuring out when we're in the building versus when yep. the teams are. I yeah. mean, it's just that's just the reality of right now. And the space was inadequate prior to that, in my humble opinion. And now that we've got COVID restrictions, it's, it's uh, heightened um, um, that concern. Yeah. Yeah, the majority of our staff members are uh, patron focused or patron service focused individuals. And so um, while we've been able to uh, find some short term measures during COVID to, you know, um, basically flex schedules and do some workstations in the library, some out and time that um, ultimately uh, the majority of our staff need to be on site in order to do their jobs. And so that has been a consideration for us. Um, Kendra? I was just going to say the staff conditions was um, one of our high priorities. And I think once we get into the meat and potatoes of what we would like to um, investigate further, you will see that we have some ideas on how that can be addressed. Um, but the staff workspace um, is inadequate, in my opinion. And we have done a lot of legwork to see how we can alleviate that. So um, I think you'll see in just a few minutes as Katie continues that we have definitely looked at that. We've have actually taken a good look at programming. Um, it, it, it's been a pretty comprehensive view. Um, and we started at what Katie, Katie likes to say, 30,000 feet and we're getting into the weeds now, um, but we can't go deeper without hearing from our community. And Kim just put a note in the chat. Uh, Kim, that is a great point that, um, you know, our, our, the size of our meeting rooms is limited. And so we, we've already been discussing the logistics of how we would um, begin to program in person in the library safely. And uh, the reality is that we have small spaces to begin with. And so so with the social distancing guidelines in place, we will likely, nothing has been decided, but we'll likely have to continue to limit um, the, the number of participants in order to create safe and healthy spaces for both our staff and our community members. Great, thank you. Yeah. So drum roll please. Digging into the short term recommendations. These are uh, objectives that the long range planning committee is recommending to our board to accomplish in the next two to three years to solve some of the immediate um, needs and challenges that we are facing. 
Um, the first recommendation is to build a branch in Severance. Um, right now, based on um, budget, uh, we are looking at an approximately 10,000 square foot facility. Um, and this is a particularly high growth area of the district that will continue to grow. Um, and so this will help serve uh, those residents better. And additionally, we've had a wonderful partnership with the town of Severance um, in order to make this project a reality. They have offered a, um, a lease for a site that is across from town hall, as well as some fee waivers to make this financially feasible for the district. The second priority, as we move to be a multi-facility district, um, we need to think about how we will be efficiently managing um, those spaces and not just duplicating services building to building. And so we felt that the best way to do this was would be to acquire an administrative hub. This would be an approximately 5,000 square foot facility um, that would increase our district-wide efficiencies. So service like processing of materials, shipping, receiving, um, human resources, communications, administration, um, would all, oh, God is trying to take us into groups. I think there's a technical error. I apologize. I hit a space bar when I needed to hit enter. I apologize. Sorry, everyone. Just ignore that. We're good. Oh, we'll bring you is on everyone, back. Is everyone back? Eh, mostly. That's my fault. I'm sorry. I responded to a question and I hit enter and that pushed the breakout rooms and no my problem. We're almost there, but not yet. It's, it's probably my <laughs> it's probably my fault because they asked the question. So yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's that's on me. I apologize. Everybody will be back in two seconds. Sorry, everybody. My apologies. All right. I think that's everyone. We just wanted to wake you up, make sure you're still paying attention. <laughs> Quit messing with the old people. <laughs> Sorry, gang. Sorry, gang. So this when somebody on the internet says push this button, don't push the button. Push the button. <laughs> So this potential administrative hub would also alleviate some of the uh, staff uh, crowding issues that we were experiencing at the Windsor Severance Library. Um, so it would be able to offset staff into this district wide um, Um, to extend its useful life and maximize efficiencies as much as possible. Um, this would potentially involve meeting some challenges in terms of increasing the children's area and decreasing noise. Um, and if we were to be able to fulfill the recommendation number two, the administrative hub, by uh, moving staff in some staff into that uh, administrative hub, it would allow us to transition existing staff space into patron focused space. Um, that way we can maximize that footprint as much as possible. Now looking to the future, so if we were to position ourselves to best serve a population of 200,000 by 2045, and there are things that the board would like to pursue in order to make that a reality. Um, the first would be to partner with other governmental entities on a shared facility and or cultural campus in Windsor. We've begun initial conversations about this. Just unfortunately, um, these processes are uh, long-term conversations. And so we want to continue that dialogue and find the best fit for other entities in town. We are not alone. Uh, and there is a, a willingness to engage on this topic by our partner agencies. So that's exciting. In terms of the cultural campus, um, it has been uh, noted in the Windsor's strategic plan, a desire to look at opportunities for potential cultural facilities or hubs. 
so to speak. And so um, libraries are a natural fit into that cultural conversation. Um, so the Parks, Recreation and Culture Department is beginning conversations about that. And we look to be a partner with them in those dialogues. Recommendation number two is to maintain our existing district owned property for potential future collaborations. So um, holding on the land um, that's at the corner of Main Street and 392 for several reasons. Um, one, uh, in that previous recommendation to partner with other governmental entities on a shared facility or cultural campus, um, this uh, asset could benefit um, those conversations. It's something that the library could potentially bring to the table in those conversations. Additionally, the east side of Windsor and the west side of Severance is going through significant development and will continue to go through some significant changes in the next few years, particularly with the development of the Future Legend Sports Park and um, the East Point development area. So if you're looking at um, basically the corner of 392 and 257, um, that Doug's Day Diner area, I believe will dramatically transform over the next few years. And last but not least, um, if growth is going to actually occur to that 200,000 mark in our, in our service area, we need to begin to prepare now for a potential regional library, so a larger library, as well as or in addition to branches as population growth warrants. Um, we need to start looking at the high growth areas and what our opportunities in the South Windsor area as well as the West Greeley area um, future uh, potential sites and severance as well. And so we need to begin those conversations, those plans um, now in order to set us up for future success. So you, you may be asking yourself, how the heck are you going to uh, fund this? Um, so just a brief history of uh, how we're funded. So the library district is its own district, um, which means that we have our own dedicated revenue source that is almost entirely property tax revenue. So we have some things uh, that there are funding mechanisms that are not available to us that are available to municipal entities. For example, library districts cannot receive severance uh, tax tax money, which is not the town of severance, it's actually oil and gas. Um, so we do not get that. However, towns do. We also cannot do um, any sort of uh, sales tax initiatives. Um, and so property taxes, is primarily it for us. Um, and so when we were formed by the town of Windsor and the school district back in 1985, we started out at 1.5 mills. Now, voters approved an increase, both an operational mill and a bond in 1995 in order to prepare for the construction of the current Windsor Severance Library on 3rd Street. Um, and then voters approved another mill levy increase in 2001, and our mill levy has been at that same rate since then, so 3.546. Now, there has been some confusion about it because of the way that that 2001 measure was written. It was a not to exceed. So um, the mill levy was at 3.546 and um, then the bond sunsetted from the 1995 measure. The, uh, the board of trustees at the time were extremely good stewards of taxpayer dollars and so they were able to pay off that note early, four years early in fact, and so that bond sunsetted back in 2011. However, because the wording was not to exceed from 2001, um, that mill levy rate remained unchanged. So the folks thought that there would be a, a decrease, but um, that wasn't actually the case because of how it was worded from the 2001 measure. Um, so uh, pop quiz, anyone know how you calculate your uh, tax bill to the library? What, what, how, how does that mill levy rate, what that, what the heck, that mill levy rate, how does that work into things? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> well, all right. Well, today you will find out. Um, so how do you calculate what you actually owe the district? You take your mill levy rate, 3.546 times the assessed value of your home. 
Now the assessed value of your home is, uh, that's a whole other calculation. So that's, you take the market value of your house and you take that times the assessment rate. For residential homes in the state of Colorado, that assessment rate is 7.15%. Now, um, previously, the Gallagher Amendment, uh, that assessment rate would fluctuate, it's usually down. But because of the repeal of the Gallagher Amendment in uh, November of 2020, that assessment rate will stay at 7.15% as long as uh, or until there is a voter approved change. So when looking at what funding options are available to library districts, we have uh, a mill levy increase, which anything with an asterisk would require voter approval, a debt service mill levy increase, land donations, um, capital fundraising uh, campaigns uh, through a private foundation, um, funding projects through cash reserves, uh, applying and, or receiving grants, for example, like through the Department of Local Affairs, um, general obligation bonds, and certificates of participation. Based on uh, projections of both rough cost estimates and preliminary project projections um, through the Weld County Assessor's Office in terms of revenue, uh, the Long Range Planning Committee believes that we can fund the three um, short-term projects through a combination of a certificates of participation and reserve funding. So at this time, it does not appear as if a um, uh, voter approved tax increase would be needed to be able to fund those short term projects. However, it is highly likely that if growth continues at the pace it does, and that we would need to add additional facilities beyond those three short term measures that we would likely need uh, a mill levy increase at some point in the longer term future. So any questions? Uh, this is Janet. Um, in the long term, uh, you could go forward with a, a bond, correct? That's a funding option to do capital construction? That is correct. So, but that would still take the uh, voter approval, correct? That is correct. Um, and a bond measure would increase your taxes. But it wouldn't increase, it could, it may not increase them long term. It could also be uh, used as a short term, like a 20 year funding bond, right? And it would cap after 20 years if the, if the loan was paid off, so to speak. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Well, but also, this is Anne, the more facilities you add, the more your operating costs go up. So a bond will build you the building, but it may not fund the operations of that building. So at some point, you may need a mill levy increase just to cover operations of multiple buildings. Just to piggyback, this is Kendra. And, um, what we'd probably in the future, we would have to be similar to what we saw in, what was that Katie 2001, where mm -hmm. we had the mill levy and the operating levy. Um, now, you know, based on past history, we may have to make sure that it, you know, future um, boards may have to make sure that there's a sunset because of the confusion that happened, but that's all that is in the longer run. As it stands in this three to five year plan, we believe we can do this. Um, and we're just scratching the surface on the financing of this. So um, we do have a lot of work yet. Um, yay, us. Um, so, you know, that would be something we'd have to look at um, down the road. But for what we're doing right now, what we'd like to do, we believe if we look at it um, and get some hard numbers, that it's very probable that we can go forward without having to do anything else, any additional fundraising, uh, like a bond. Any other questions? Don't worry, this isn't your only opportunity. There'll be a couple more opportunities throughout the night. So if anything pops up. Well, without further ado, we'll enter into our breakout rooms. Um, it looks like we will 
um, because of the number of staff on this call, we will split into two groups. They will be facilitated by Bud and myself. So Bud will give instructions here shortly on what to do next. Um, but I'm going to put in the chat a link to our note catcher. If I can get back to the right screen. Uh, now, we want to make sure that we're accurately recording your feedback. Um, this feedback will be shared with the Long Range Planning Committee. Uh, and additionally, the recording of tonight's session will be posted and sent out for future reference, as well as the notes and responses to any questions that we gather tonight. Um, this is in addition to, you'll also see the notes and the questions from last night's session as well. Um, just in case folks have the same, same questions, we wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page. So feel free to log into that note catcher document and just a few guidelines as we dig into breakout rooms um, just make sure to listen respectfully without interrupting uh, listen to understand we're going to all work to avoid blame speculation and inflammatory language allow everyone the chance to speak and last but not least we ask that you stay on topic focused on this topic of facilities um, so we'll have seven discussion questions, and then uh, before we end the breakout portion, we ask that you select a member of your group to report out and share with the larger group when we get back. Katie will uh, share a couple of ways to keep asking questions of this group and of the library in just You're a just moment. Button crazy, wanna... aren't you, bud? <laughs> I'm pretty bad at the internet. But if I keep at it, if I keep at it, I feel like one of these days I'm going to figure some stuff out. You know? Yay. <laughs> Katie, you ready to wrap us up? Uh oh. Katie, you're on mute. Well, technology is hard, apparently. All right. <laughs> I'm talking to you guys for a really long time. <laughs> I think she already wrapped it up. Wow, it went really well. Uh, I just enjoy the part where she was on mute and not me for a change. So that's great. Katie, you want to give it a second try? Yes. So group, group one did not have an opportunity to select a person before we ran out of time. So do I have any volunteers from group one that would like to share a brief summary of our discussions? No. <laughs> Well, I'll do a quick recap then, just uh, uh, to let our group off the hook, folks. Thank you. Group one people. Um, just really quickly looking at the note catcher, overall, uh, the tone of the room seemed to be that there is excitement about all three of the exploration options, but in particular, um, the, or the recommendations, but in particular, the severance branch. Um, several folks in, in uh, express their excitement and appreciation for that option. Um, let's see. We had a lot of great questions, which just a reminder, we'll be sending out answers to those questions later this week. And uh, that, that, that folks see a lot of advantages uh, to having more accessibility across our district with these proposals. Anything to add group one members? Nope, you got it. Uh, I mentioned that I thought it was great you're going to hold on, hold on to the large property yes, for the long term. You. So, how about Bud, your group? Uh, well, uh, I I also did not get to select someone to. Uh, talk on our behalf because I came back early to make sure we could get everybody going. Uh, if anybody feels so inclined, I'm eager for them to just take the floor <laughs> and summarize our conversation, which I thought was actually really practical and good. I'd like to take a shot at it. Thank you. You're welcome. So I, I think there were a lot of initial positive feedback in regards to the conversation we had. We had some very uh, direct questions about even more strategic than we're at, we have been, in that if you build in the Severance Library, can you expand it? 
And, you know, the answer to that was uh, if we, we built it right in the first place, but that depends on what mm -hmm. we can afford. So there's still a lot of unknown answers. So there were questions about not only our growth plans that we have, but I, I heard more of a long-term stimulated growth. Uh, there were questions about uh, services and, um, you know, I, I think we covered a lot of ground about how we're planning to finance this whole thing. And Lance asked some questions about, are we doing this serially? Or how are we, how are we gonna handle all these projects and programs? And I, I, I think uh, we talked about, well, you know, it's, it's probably going to be more effective to do two at the beginning, but at the end of the day, we are going to have suffer some downtime in the the Third Street Library simply because of the renovations be going on. But I I tossed Casey in the pool and said she can run all of her programs outside at that time, so uh, it will still be very effective. So it was a good discussion in regards to our plans in our future, and I did offer to anybody in the group to to join us on the on the long term, you know planning committee meetings, or if they had any specific questions they want answered in regards to the finances, we'll do our best to share the data we have with them. But everybody has to understand that we're just going back to our own board. Here's our plan. And here's what the community said about it, guys. Uh, can we now go a little further? We're not gonna sign contracts. We're gonna try to, to take our, I think Kendra called it our 30,000 foot view numbers and put them down into more realistic approaches and validate what we've come up with. And we don't want to go back to the uh, community for more money at this state and time. And just to reference um, Ron, where you can find all of our future meetings that Ron was talking about, if you go to our website, I just threw that link in the chat, but if you are, do not have the chat accessible, if you go to our website, hit the about tab and library board, you can pull up all of the library board's meetings as well as at the bottom of the page, um, uh, you can find all of the minutes and documentation um, for each meeting. And then, like I mentioned in my small group, we've been recording our board sessions since January. And if you give me just one second, here is the playlist to find all of the board specific meetings. So, you know, I know that Cindy's gonna have a hot date night with Lee um, and get some popcorn to watch these previous board sessions. Katie, I know you think you're joking. However, I don't believe that you are. <laughs> it was mentioned in our small group. <laughs> um, additionally, I had promised my group um, uh, detailed information about each of the proposals can be found in our February 18th work session. The packet can be found here, if I can find all my windows. Ooh. And the recording can be found on that YouTube playlist link from earlier. So if you wanna really dive deep into all the data behind um, the all the proposals that were explored, that would be the summary meeting to watch or read through the, the packet on. Katie, I, I'm, I just wanted to um, say one last thing too that we mentioned it in our group. And I just wanna reiterate that we are not done with long-term planning. Everything we're doing right now is what we've um, brought forth to do three to five years. And we're gonna get it, dig deeper in the numbers, dig deeper in the feasibility and dig deeper in the finances. But we're not done with this because it's a short-term, long-term facilities plan. So we're going to continue going forward, um, looking much further down the road so that we have something to share and some sort of plan for our community and our district. Thank you, Kendra. Uh, now is the time for any final questions. Janet actually put one in the chat. How did the previous meetings go? Um, we had one meeting last night and I, I, I felt like it went well. Um, we had, oh, there was 28 people signed up and I think about half of that attended. Um, will there be more public meetings in the next few weeks? Uh, not in terms of, of public meetings on the draft plan. These were the two opportunities in order to submit public input there. Um, but I will be providing information on how to provide feedback. 
Oh, and Bud, you're exactly right. There is a library board meeting tomorrow that you can feel free to provide input there too. Any and other Eric, questions? I was just going to piggyback on, sorry, Katie, um, that every board member's email is on our website under the board um, information on the website. So if you would like to um, give anyone your feedback, um, we are open to hear from you. Any other questions? And phone numbers, I think Ron was saying with his hand. <laughs> All right, in terms of next steps, we will distribute the notes with this week. Um, we'll distribute the note catchers from both sessions as well as a list of questions and written responses with links to additional information. This uh, feedback will be presented to the Long Range Planning Committee on March 31st um, at 1 p.m. Uh, the public is invited to attend. You can attend uh, or uh, those meetings. Um, you can find the link on the library board page. Then uh, right now, the final plan uh, is slated for presentation for approval at the April 29th board meeting. So, uh, and uh, oh, excuse me, I forgot to take off that bullet from last night, but you can send feedback to longrangeplanning at clearviewlibrary.org at any point in time. Um, and we welcome it and it would be much valued and appreciated. Ideally, if you could provide that, that feedback before March 31st, then we can have a complete uh, picture to be able to present to the committee. Um, but you're always welcome to send us feedback at any point in time. And that's all I have for you folks. Thank you so much for attending and participating. We really value your feedback and input. And uh, we're really looking forward to meeting the needs of the district in the short term and long term. Thanks all. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thanks, Katie. Good You're night. Great. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.